You better thank me for making you my wife because you can't work at all, you know? You only just marry my son so that you could get inheritance, right? From the perspective of my husband, Sean, the mother-in-law, Beth, I was only just there to take care of the family. Well, a few months later, they'll see that they'll be getting what they deserve. I was working as a sales representative for a company. However, as I was rather soft-spoken and I didn't have an aggressive personality, my sales performance was not too good and I was exhausted both mentally and physically from the pressure from my boss and the physicality of traveling outside the company. It was around this time that I met my husband, Sean. So, you are from the sales department. It must be tough working at sales. Yeah, but I'm not good and fit for it at all. I can't be pushy and aggressive, so I'm no good. I bet you have a gentle personality and you think about other people more, so that's why. I guess you don't have to push yourself too hard because work is not for everyone. I... I see. I think a caring person like you is much nicer and better than a very pushy salesman. You're worth it. Th thank you so much. Sean had spoken very kind words to me when I had lost all my self-confidence. After we started dating, thanks to Sean for accepting me for who I am, my sad and heart as well as my slow self-esteem seemed to get more positive and lighten up. And as we continued with our relationship, Sean had proposed to me. I want you to marry me. Oh, r really? And will you quit your job and become a full-time housewife for me? There's no need for you to force yourself to continue a job that you don't like or doesn't suit you. It's really difficult for me to see you being in pain, so let me take care of you. Oh, I'm so happy. Thank you. I am so glad that I found a good man who cares about me so much. I had thanked Sean and I accepted his sweet proposal. After the marriage was finalized and we had greeted my parents, we then went to my husband's family to say hello. My husband's family consists of my husband's sister, Jill, and his mother, Beth, who is in a wheelchair and they are both living together. Nice to meet you. My name is Megan. Congratulations. I've heard a lot about you, that you are a kind and gentle person. I am very happy for you both. Nice to meet you. My brother is very lucky to marry such a nice girl like you. Yeah, you're right about that. I'm really happy. Thank you very much. Beth and Jill also gave me their blessings, and they were very nice people. But, it would be really reassuring if we have such a good wife living here, wouldn't it? Yeah, I agree. Then, when we get married, let's all live here together. What? All of a sudden, Sean would say that we would move in with his family. When I dated him, we had never even talked about living together with his family before, so when he said that, I got really confused. Despite my confusion, Sean, Jill, and Beth are all excitedly talking about moving in together. I'm so happy. It's really sweet of you to even say that you'd move in with us. Megan, you're a housewife, so you'll do the housework and take care of mom. It would be somewhat easier if you and Jill share the responsibility, right? Yes, I would really appreciate it if you could do it with me, Megan. Thank you. I'd feel a lot safer if we moved in and if you took care of Mom. What? He acted as if we already decided to move in with his family and that the decision was finalized. I was really bothered by it. 
but I was in no mood to interrupt and interfere with the excited atmosphere of Sean, Beth, and Jill. So, I didn't say anything at that moment. On the way home, I asked Sean about the topic without any hesitation. Hey, are we really actually going to live with your family? Well, yes. I was really think of us living together with my family. Why, you don't like the idea? Well, the topic came out of nowhere. It would have been great if you talked about the topic to me first, you know? But I can't really say no to it now. My mother and sister are really happy. If I refuse, they will both be really sad. But... You're gentle and considerate, and I can definitely trust you to take care of my mother. Because I trust you that much, I thought we could live together and help each other out. Yeah. I couldn't say no to Sean's serious words, and I had no choice but to agree to live with his family. And from the day after we officially married and finished the wedding ceremony, we started living together at my husband's parents' house. On the first night of living together, we all went out to dinner at a restaurant to also celebrate our wedding. I'm really happy for you and Sean. Please take good care of me from now on. I'm counting on you. Yes. I'm looking forward to living with you. I'm sure you'll be fine. You can be the gentle Megan as you have always been. Yes. I have a very subtle unhappy face, but Sean, Beth, and Jill are smiling and are being very happy. Then suddenly, Jill began to say that she had an important announcement to make. Actually, I have an announcement to make to you all. Sis, what's going on? Oh, what is it? I've actually been promoted and transferred in my company. What? That's amazing! Congratulations! Really? Good for you, honey. Congratulations! Huh? What? Her surprising announcement made me dizzy. Aside from her promotion, does her transfer mean that she's moving away? Both Sean and Beth are just congratulating Jill on her promotion and transfer. <laughs> My surprise was a great success. Thanks, everyone. I'm gonna do my best at my new workplace. Yeah, we'll be cheering for you, so good luck. Now that Megan is here, you can focus on your job, Jill. I can transfer to my new workplace without any worries, all thanks to you, Megan. Thank you. Please take good care of my mother for me. What? So you're moving away? When will you move? Tomorrow. Huh? What? It's too sudden. Jill responds to me with a big smile on her face. Even though it's a surprise, I feel like I'm the only one who's really surprised. It's not what we all had planned, but... All the housewives out there are working hard on their own. Please do your best, for my sister too. I'm counting on you, Megan. I'll be counting on you too, Megan. I mean, does that mean that I have to do all the housework and taking care of Sean's mother all by myself? We were talking about sharing the responsibility with Jill, but what the heck? And the next day, Jill moved out all her cardboard boxes and really left the house. Although Jill has a room by herself, I never peeked in, and it never occurred to me that there were cardboard boxes piled up in her room. I mean, it's not like she had been preparing for this for a long time without telling me. Did Sean actually know about this too? I was then left to do the housework and taking care of my mother-in-law all by myself. Sean would not help me with the housework or even try to support me in taking care of Beth. 
Oh, honey, can you please clean up a little there? It's your job as a housewife to do the house chores. My husband comes home late at night after work and just lounges around watching TV or looking at something on his phone. It's hard enough taking care as it is my first time in doing this, so he could at least try to be a little help. Beth, who I thought welcomed me gently, has also changed her attitude towards me. Hey, you're very slow. When I call you, you should come over to me much quicker. I'm sorry. What is this dish? I don't really like this taste. It doesn't suit me. Remake it. I'm sorry. She treated me as if I were her servant and complained about me harshly. I'm becoming increasingly frustrated and annoyed with Sean, who is just being lazy, and with Beth, who is becoming more and more bossy and complaining about everything. It is too hard, both physically and mentally, to handle the hectic housework and caregiving all alone in this kind of environment. After living like this for about several months, I've reached my limit. I finally confronted and argued to Sean in a strong tone of voice. It is very hard for me to do all the housework and taking care of Beth all by myself. I'll do the housework, but Beth is your mother, so at least help me move around and take care of her. Sean got offended. Huh? You can't do your job, and I made you my wife, so you better be grateful. You were useless at work, so all you can do is be a housewife. You should at least shut up and take care of the house. What? And to my surprise, Sean showed off the filled out divorce papers. I'm the one who's providing for you. You can't even earn a decent living, so you'd be in a huge trouble if you get a divorce from me. If you're a piece of shit who can't even do house chores, I'm going to kick you out from the house. If you don't want me to leave you, just shut up and do your work. Who the hell does he think he is? Did Sean marry me just to make me do the housework and take care of his own mother? Was he lying when he acted like he cared about me? Then Beth came into the conversation and joined Sean. It's only natural for a wife to take care of her mother-in-law. What kind of heartless family did you grow up in? What? You couldn't do work so you have no money and you married my own son for just the inheritance anyway, right? Well, being a wife won't make you an heiress and if you're so useless, I won't leave you anything special at all. But, if you can be a better housewife, then I'll give it some thought. They don't have the slightest gratitude for me about taking care of them. I can't believe that they would assume that I'm just looking for money and their inheritance and looking down on me like that. Even Jill just ignores my messages. She has never sent me a message of concern for her own mother or for me. Why do I have to work for this selfish family? I thought we could have a mutual caring marriage relationship, but Sean had no intention of doing so from the beginning. His attitude of caring for me was just to trick me and to take advantage of me. I can't live with these people anymore. Let's get a divorce. The next day, after seeing Sean off to work, I packed my belongings and left home. That night, I received a phone call from Sean who sounded irritated. Where the hell are you going without any permission? Hurry home and cook dinner. Take care of my mother. If you want me to take care of Beth, why don't you ask the woman you're dating now? What? Why? Actually, Sean was having an affair behind my back. I noticed the smell of perfume on Sean's clothes when he came home late at night, 
So I requested an investigation done by the detective agency. So I had received evidence of Sean's affair. You leave it to your wife to take care of your own mother. And yet, you're having fun with another woman. You're unfit as both a son and a husband. So what I mean is, you're a horrible person. Ugh! Taking care of parents is a wife's job. You're the one who doesn't know how to be a man's wife. You're the one who's no good. We're divorced already, so I'm not your wife anymore. So, it's not my job anymore. What? I had submitted our finalized divorce papers. My husband was stunned and he froze, as if he hadn't expected it. He was the one who filled out the divorce papers on his own, so I couldn't understand why he was surprised. Hey, are you really that stupid to finalize the divorce? How are you even going to make a living if you can't even work properly? You can't work because you're that stupid. I have some income from the real estate, so you don't have to really worry about me. What? I had a real estate which I inherited from my late grandfather and I earned income by managing it. It wasn't a large amount, but I had been saving the real estate income bit by bit and had saved enough to live for the time being. I have owned the property since I was single and you haven't been involved at all in this. So both the real estate and the savings are my own properties. They are not common property and it won't be subjected to the property division. What? I can live without you having to provide for me. A piece of shit like me are to be thrown away, right? Ugh. If you want to know about the details, then you'll have to talk to my lawyer for it. If you're so good at your job, you should at least understand the meaning of the word attorney. I said that and hang up the phone. If you think that you can do whatever you want, then you're mistaken. Then after that, according to the mutual acquaintance I had between Sean and I, it seems like Sean had asked Jill for help. I can't do all the housework and take care of mom all by myself, so come back here. Wouldn't the outcome have been different if you just helped out a little? You deserved it. No way! Now, you're responsible for taking care of mom and doing everything around the house. I just got transferred, so I can't go back now. But Jill had given Sean the cold shoulder, and he had to do the housework and take care of his own mother all by himself. And what happened with his mistress is... You were saying that you would get a divorce and marry me when your mother died, and that you'd have an inheritance and a life we both could afford. But what the heck? Hey, plans change, you know. But you know what? Your ex-wife is charging me alimony already. This sucks. She complained a lot, and eventually, the mistress ran away from him. Sean used his nursing care leave to start taking care of Beth, but it was much harder than he had imagined. Hey, it hurts. Shut up. You can move at least this much all by yourself. Ugh, don't yell at me like that. I can't really move like I want to. Stop crying, you're annoying me. Frustrated, Sean began to lose his temper, and Beth cried every day. Beth didn't want to be taken care of by other people, but eventually she was put into nursing facility. Sean returned from nursing care leave, but word spread at work that he had been cheating on his wife, using his own wife as a caregiver, and for this, people were talking about him behind his back. Although he has no place at work anymore, he is forced to work to pay for alimony and for the nursing facility. With alimony and nursing facility payments, Sean can't really afford to live a comfortable life. He seems to be living all alone, being lonely most of the time. Sean had sent me a message once. 
I don't enjoy food after being alone. I finally understand it now. I'm very thankful for you. I blocked him, of course. How can I ever trust him anymore? For my part, I bought myself another real estate to manage and increase my source of income. Maybe I'm suited to a job like this, where I can manage things on my own. If I didn't have to be so extravagant all the time, I could live a comfortable life with alimony coming in every month from Sean and his mistress. I can buy my favorite sweets, buy my favorite clothes, and live a peaceful and restful life without worrying about anyone else. Even if I eat alone, the meals are delicious, and it is delicious to eat what you like, when you like, in your own timing. For the time being, I will enjoy living alone comfortably. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel. Well then, please have a great day!